Welcome everybody from uh, our different venue outside in the beautiful patio at Gerwin today. They're renovating and fixing up the synagogue where we usually have Onik Shabbat. So uh, we decided to step outside a little bit, a little change of scenery and have our Onik Shabbat from the, the outdoors. And I hope everybody enjoys and continues to enjoy the uh, wonderful weather we are having, which again, I think continue to get better and better across the world. And the synagogue goes through its renovations. We really hope that shortly in the near future we'll be able to gather together again for a Onig Shabbat and our weekly services in person. Shalom Aleichem Alachai Ashoharez Malachai Yehelion Mihi Melech Malachai Amlochim HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shalom Aleichem Alachai Ashoharez Malachai Yehelion Mihi melech malchayam lochim akadosh baruch hu Boachem l'shalom alachaya sholom alachaya helyon Mihi melech malchayam lochim akadosh baruch hu Boachem l'shalom alachaya sholom alachaya helyon Mihi melech malchayam lochim akadosh baruch hu Varchuni l'shalom alachaya sholom alachaya helyon Mihi melech malchayam lochim akadosh baruch hu Varchuni l'shalom alachaya sholom alachaya helyon Mihi melech malchayam lochim akadosh baruch hu Tzitzchem l'shalom alachai ha-shalom alachai ha-yon Mihi melech malachai amlochim ha-kadosh baruch hu Tzitzchem l'shalom alachai ha-shalom alachai ha-yon Mihi melech malchai amlochim ha-kadosh baruch hu we're halfway through the month of Elul, the last month of the year. So we're going to speak about now a little bit about blowing the shofar, the Tekiah shofar, which we all know from Rosh Hashanah. First, it's interesting to note that this year's Rosh Hashanah is on Shabbat and Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, which means on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, we actually will not be blowing the shofar. We know there's a prohibition from blowing the shofar on Shabbat, like other type of prohibitions that we have, that we refrain from certain work and activities on Shabbat, shofar being one of them because of the concern that people may start carrying the shofar outside in public places when they would be prohibited to do so. So actually, although usually we have two days of shofar blowing, shofar blasting, this year we only have one day. And as of course, like all other years, Rabbi Shane will be here on, on Rosh Hashanah and he'll go around blowing shofar that everyone will be able to hear the shofar sounds that we all know. But the custom is the month before we start blowing the shofar. So I'll get everyone in the shofar Rosh Hashanah spirit with having some kiyat shofar outside in this wonderful patio so you could all listen in here and get used to the wonderful sounds. the four sounds of the shofar, the tekiah, the long sound, followed by the shvarim, the shorter, the three sounds, followed by the trua, the nine very short sounds, followed by a final tekiah at the end. Shabbos 
Interesting to know about the shofar. So, any shofar, as long as it comes from a kosher animal, it could be used. Now, kosher animals vary from goats and sheep. They all have different types of horns. To bigger animals, gazelles, deer. Deer really have antlers, not really horns. But there are some very, very interesting animals that have very, very long shofars. Many of you may remember over the years seeing very, very long from the ibex animal, ibex. Very, very long, beautiful, curled horn. So although all the horns from all the animals could be used, but the ram is considered the one which is most ideal, the ram's horn, as opposed to the cow's horn, which is not used at all. And the question is, what's the difference between the ram's horn and the cow's horn? They're both kosher animals. Well, the ram represents the binding of Isaac, as we know. When Abraham, our forefather, went to, was commanded to potentially slaughter his son, and he said, if this is God's commandment, I will do so. And at the final moments, God said, no, of course, I do not want you to do that. I want to see your commitment to me, and instead slaughter this ram instead as a sacrifice, instead of your son. So the ram represents the commitment to follow God's ways, even when it's difficult. And the cow represents the sin of the golden calf that we know the Jewish people in the Sinai Desert, when they feared that Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, had died, they made an idol, a golden calf, which is considered one of the worst sins in the Jewish history. So on the day of Rosh Hashanah, we want God to remember us for a happy and healthy, sweet new year. So we tell God, remember the horn from the ram. Remember the horn from the ram and the commitment that we have in our life. And don't remember necessarily our bad deeds that we do across the year, like the sin of the golden calf. So another way to for, ask for God, beseech God for a happy and healthy year is specifically taking the horn of the animal that reminds God of our overall commitment to serve Him, even through, even through difficult times. Certainly, a year like this, the year ending, coming to a close, has been a very, very difficult year. For many of us, one of the most difficult years of, in the, really in the entire world, certainly the last 50 years, I think it's pretty safe to say. But, we, but we, we've shown God that we, we, we trust Him and that we believe Him, and we will still continue to serve Him even during these difficult times. Adon olam asher malach b'terem kol yetzir nivra liyes nasa bechev so kol azay melech shemo nikra v'yacharei keklos hakol levahadol yimloch nahara v'uaya v'uove hu yihye b'sifara v'hu echad v'yein shenim La ham shila la ach vihira bili reishis bili sachles vila haos vha misra vhu keli vha igali vizra kavli bies nasa vhu nisi umanos li menas kosi bia mekra bia hado av kid ruchim bies ishan bia ira viem ruchi givios yado shemli vlo ira. Everyone should have a continued happy and healthy week, a weekend, and we'll see everybody next week.